method to isolate the stuff. What version do you have? Uh, what? King James. Yeah, I know King James. No, no, I'm just, just so I can put it in here. Go ahead, whenever you're ready. Okay, just don't yell at me, okay? And then. Just saying, but it's not really for you to yell at me, okay? Read! He's still here. I want to forget it. <laughs> oh! Oh. 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 <laughs> My bad. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with the lowliness, with the lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, and endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. In the bond, in the bonds of peace, there was one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, mm. one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through and through all, and in you all. And in you all. Go ahead. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, which now this he ascended. What does it mean by that? He also, he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended from far above all the heavens, and that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children. That we shall no longer be children. I want to emphasize on that. Go on. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Stop right there. Stop right there. You see, you see what I'm trying to emphasize on? That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning and craftiness, whereby they light and wait to deceive. Verse 15, Vanessa. This is what we do every time we come to church. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head. Stop right there. Yes. We're going. So when we come, and not only when we come to church, that when we fellowship with each other, fellowshipping does not mean church. We go to Applebee's and we fellowship. We go to Anais' house and we eat her mother's food and we fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> I eat the cheese, sorry. She, she, she got a minister. Right? She got a minister right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we, everything we do, if it's if it's ice skating, if it's if it's going to New York, if it's going to Philly, watching a comedy show, we are fellowshipping. And in that, you know, we 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 are down to earth and we have fun and we you know we got mad jokes and 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 we act crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. But in that all, we speak truth and love. There always comes in a part. Every time we hang out, remember that Every time we hang out, we can act crazy. We fight. We play fight. We chase each other. She acts mad crazy in Walmart. But when she but, asked, she asked for that <laughs> at the end of the class, but, the announcement. But but there always is a period of time while fellowshipping that we speak raw truth to each other in love, so that we may become. That we may grow up in all things, not just church things, in all things. That, that when I am being perfected, Shannon, in the knowledge of God and who God is by the truth that has been spoken to me, I do not only exceed in church, I exceed in my workplace, I exceed in my family, I exceed in my friendships and relationships, I exceed in matrimony, I exceed in every area of my life 
because I have put knowledge first of who is supposed to be in me and who I am supposed to be in him. So therefore, when truth is being spoken, Janet, and we grow in truth, and we grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are not mere children that are pushed to and fro from every wind of doctrine. That when a new doctrine comes out, we can look at it and say, I'm your counterfeit because I know the truth. No. You may feel like it's God, and my goosebumps comes up, and, and your message feels good, and, and, and things are happening, and there's miracles happening, but there's something that sits right here that tells me, that's not it. That's not it. The reason why I have that conviction, Allah, is that that's not it, because I have been pushed in truth, and I have grown as a mature Christian in every area of my life, so Satan can show up in every situation of my life, and I can still catch up because I have grown in all aspects. This is why we push so hard. This is why the Bible is so spectacular in the life of, of a Christian. This is why fellowshipping is more than just singing and, 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 and saying hallelujah and coming to church on Sunday. It is we are united, speaking truth to one another so we can grow in the knowledge of God. So when counterfeit arrives in the picture, we notice it and say, get out the way. Because I'm not the kind of children, I'm not the kind of child who is passive-minded and accepts everyone the doctrine. I'm not being pushed. That's the thing, uh, 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 Anani, that, that when you grow up in knowledge, somebody can say, do this. And you can say, no, I won't do that because that's not who I am. It's not just, it's just not people saying, you know, smoke some weed. Well, I'm not going to smoke weed because, not because that's not who I am, because I know better. But when church folks come to you, I was just talking to my mom today about this. Just like the same thing, where church comes from, I, I, I didn't start church yesterday. I've been in here for years. And I've been through so many things, of so many prayers, and, and people praying for me, and, and, and David, you're going to be a pastor, and they're just praying for somebody else, and who's not me? They're praying for a person that they want me to be, but that's not who I am. And the reason why I can't be pushed is because I don't have an identity crisis. I know who I am in him. Mm. And when you know who you are, and you have your identity in Christ, Nobody pushes you, nor peer pressures you to be something who you're not. Because you can be the kind of person that says, I am not moved by your title. I know who I am, and I'm not moved because I have purpose in him. Be very careful. If you're not peer pressured to do something, that's not who you are. Because the Bible says in Philippians, que Dios pone en nosotros el querer Come el hacer por su buena voluntad. If he wants you to be a pastor or an evangelist or a lawyer or a teacher or a banker or a massage therapist, he will put the want and the passion and equip you to do it. That, 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 that when, when God says, all right, you know, Magdalene, I want you to be, you know, a missionera. You're not going to say, well, I guess I got to go and be a missionera. Because this is not what I want to do, but I got to do it because I have to. That's not how God works. Because you're trying to tell me that God puts a gun to your head and says, you better do it or I'll kill you. That's not how it works. The Bible says in Philippians, the verse before that, work out your own salvation. Don't copy somebody else's DNA in Christianity. Don't say, you know, David preaches good. I want to preach just like David. Don't try to be me. Because what's going to happen is you're going to try to speak like me and do like I do. And the demons that I wrestle with are going to come attack you because they're confused because you got the mic same anointing. And you're going to you're gonna spend time fighting with demons that you ain't got no power rebuking. Because you're trying to act like somebody who's in a higher position than you are. Or in a lower position than you are. Be grateful in the position that God has put you in. 
God has given you the kind of faith that you can work out. He's not overbearing. He's not going to give you something you can't complete. That's why it's very, very, very important that you grow as a Christian. Because I'm going to challenge every one of you. I'm going to challenge you. That we cannot be the same person we were in 2010. And when 2012 comes, we cannot have the same mentality that we had in 2011. Because the Bible says that we are renewed day by day. Not Sunday by Sunday. Not year by year. Not 10 years by 10 years. We are renewed day by day because we have the kind of Holy Spirit who is regenerating us day by day. You get in your work. Your mind is being transformed day by day. And this is the kind of prayer I told you I to, I'm praying about last week. I want this hunger and this thirst. That's why I'm so excited when she comes here and talking about all these notes. And, and I just couldn't wait to get That is like off the hook because I'm like willing to sit down and learn from some of y'all because I know y'all can do it. Y'all are more than capable of doing it. But we have to make up in our mind that when we are going to stand for truth and nothing but the truth, we are going to be attacked. We are going to be ostracized. We're going to say that we're weirdos. We're going to say that it doesn't take all that. We're going to, we're going to be called super spiritual. Well, we're going to call whatever we want to be. But we are going to stand for truth because truth matters. Jen. I just wanted to rewind a little bit um, and back you up with some scripture about what you started talking about. Um, in 2 Timothy 2, 22, um, it says, Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out a pure heart. And then 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Just wanted to throw that sidebar in there. Yeah. No, but um, also in what you were saying about... The way you talk, I'm sorry. Go back to what you were saying. Oh, you don't mean it. We're done, but say what you got to say. Um, so. Ephesians chapter oh, 4. Yeah. Ephesians 4. Everybody go back to Ephesians 4. Sorry. <laughs> Flip my page. But say what you got to say. No, but I was saying that in, in conjunction to what you were saying about, um, about uh, the identity thing, it's clear in the Bible where in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 10, 12 on, it, it says, For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves to those who commend themselves by they, by they measuring themselves by themselves or comparing themselves among themselves. Wow. Mm. And not wise. Are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us. Wow. And sphere, a sphere which especially includes you. For we are not over exceedingly our, or over ex, overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you. For it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure. This that is in our men's in our men's labor, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere mm. to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's sphere or of accomplishments. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord, for not. For he, for not he who commends himself is appointed, but whom the Lord commends. Man, that's off the Ooh, hook. That's like right on point. Right? That's off the hook. Because right these there. are the kind of people. Man, this is the expansion. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, ten, twelve, right, and on. Ten, twelve to, to the end. Yeah. This is off the hook because this is the whole meaning of the expansion of the body. The expansion of the body. The expansion of the body. So when Christ says that you shall do greater things 
than what I had done. It is not talking about that we're going to be raising people from the dead and we're going to be <laughs> healing the sick and we're going to be, you know, we're going to say, you know, Shannon died, Shannon come out the tomb and she's going to get up from her grave. That's, <laughs> that's not what he was talking about. You see how scary that sounds? That's not what he was talking about. When he said greater things, it's because Jesus was called to the people of Israel. He preached to Israel. He gave Israel an opportunity. And when he said, well, you should do greater things, it was the church after him being resurrected that went to the world, went to the Gentiles, and went to the other nations to preach the gospel that Jesus could have never done in his own limited body. So Christ said, I'm going to die on the cross because what happens is that, that I'm, trying to, I'm trying to preach to Anais and she don't get it. I'm trying to preach. I'm here in the flesh. The word is in flesh. And the word is going from Galilee. It's going to Jerusalem. It's going to all these places preaching the gospel. But while I'm in Galilee, there's somebody in Jerusalem who is dying. And I can't be two places at one time. So this is what I got to do. I'm preaching to people. They're not getting it. They're coming against me. They're not understanding the parables. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm trying to get in her, but I can't because I'm limited by flesh. Flesh can't go in flesh. So I'm going to the cross. I'm going to solve it. He says, I'm going to solve it. He says, nobody takes my life. I put my life down. No, that's why that whole dispensational doctrine about, you know, the Jews are going to pay for what they did for killing Christ. Nobody killed Christ. Can I, can I read a little scripture? Read, read what you got to do before I go um, Acts, <laughs> Acts 2, uh, starting at verse 22, says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs of God. Is that Peter? Through, yes. Okay. And the day of Pentecost. Anyway, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also knew him, being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Nobody does it. Nobody took his life. He says, I put and I laid my life down for my sheep. This is what he was saying. So he was like, I can't be everywhere at the same time, Janet. So I have to expand my body. So he says, I'm going to die on the cross. And I can't stay dead because I have a bigger picture. I got a bigger ministry to fulfill. He says, so I'm going to die on the cross. And I'm going to get up the third day. And he says, and when I get up, I said, that I will go to a place to prepare a place. And I will not leave you alone. I will send another counselor who will be with you and in you. Okay. So, a couple weeks back, we were talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is the right context to put it in. Because when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, it was more than ha It was more than all that. What he was doing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was not just speaking in tongues. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is baptizing you into the body of Christ. So therefore, there's a church in Pennsylvania, there's a church in New York City, there's a church in Africa, there's a church in China, there's a church in Japanese that the body is everywhere at the same time doing the same work. Now, Jesus said, I have my body, I'm the head, and I can be everywhere at the same time. That's why we are called the body of Christ. You know, we make songs about it, and we're the body of Christ, and we're the body of Christ, and we don't understand what the real meaning is behind it. That when we receive the Holy Spirit, after accepting Jesus Christ as Savior, He baptizes you into the body of Christ. So it's more than just saying, you know, the evidence of the Holy Spirit is my tongues. That's not the evidence of the Holy Spirit. That is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Because not everybody speaks in tongues. He gives this, the gift of tongues to those he wants to give it to. He don't give it to everybody. So therefore, tongues cannot be. I'm going to say it right there just in case it be posted on Facebook. Tongues is not the evidence of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of the Holy Spirit living in you, which is love, not tongues. If you can't love your brother, you ain't Holy Spirit filled. If you can't love your enemies, you are not Holy Spirit filled. You can speak in tongues and not have love. 
The Bible says, si yo hablas en lenguas humanas y angélicas y no tengo amor, vengo a ser como mercado que resuena el símbolo que retiña. I am empty. Bam. Tongues ain't the evidence then. Because it's anti-biblical. So I don't know where people get that mess from. Do you see why it's so important to be engrafted in the scripture so you're not pushed away by every wind of doctrine? Their doctrine. That if you don't speak to tongues, you're not saved. You're not saved. And like, you know, I was that the lighthouse? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oops, you spoke to the wrong person. Go ahead. <laughs> the lighthouse. But um, I visited there, and like they tried to push that into your head, where you, if you do not speak tongues, you are you are now saved, and you can, like, you hear everywhere, and, like, in every seat and bench, like, some people, like, they sound like they're speaking gibberish. I don't know. Gibberish, yeah. Gibberish. Just it's because, nonsense. Just because, like, you could tell, like, it's not real. And, you know, like, it was funny because when I was visiting there, <laughs> like, I would tell them, like, I would tell some people that try to push to me. Try to tell me that you don't speak tongues, that um, you're not saved. And I went to, there's a, in Corinthians, I think, 14? Is it first Corinthians? I'm one of the Corinthians, where it says that um, neither, like, tongues or nothing, it just, like, neither tongues. Then you understand that it's, that's a. It's a gift, not a result of your Christianity. Yeah. It's a gift, but it's not given to, to everybody. Yeah, he says, and some it. were given tongues, and some yeah. were given to interpretation of tongues, and some were given prophecy, and some were given to miracles, meaning there was some, it was not the whole body given speaking in right. tongues. Because if we all stand in church and start picking the tongues, we'll be a mess. Yeah, and but, yeah but I looked this up here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it specifically says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each of, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for, for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by, the, by that one Spirit. To another mir miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. And all these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Amen. Just as who determines? He determines. The apostle? <laughs> the pastor? The leader, no. who determines? God, God determines. Yes. So who are we as pastors and leaders and apostles to say, you know, you know, I got a power, and and, and I, if I lay hands on you, then then, <laughs> then if I lay hands on you, then you're gonna receive the you know the gift of tongues because I, God can give me the authority. Who are you? God determines who He gives spiritual gifts, and if it's necessary. Um, Melissa, in reference to whoever told you that, um, <laughs> no way, no, I'm not, I'm not, all, all I'm saying is this is, this is what it says about those people. In Galatians 1, 6, it says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. I had someone here in this church tell me, ah, I'm not going to say name. He's no longer here, of course. <laughs> Put the camera to the oh, camera. Um, yeah, no, I'm <laughs> oh, I'm gonna ask God to give you to give you that hip or whatever. Oh, like I said, it's not for everybody. So he just went on and on. I just walked away from him. 
It's okay, ridiculous. It's not for everybody. It's not. Goodbye. It's <laughs> Goodbye. It's it is, it is oh. not for everybody. And it's just as ridiculous. And it's, and it's nonsense when somebody says, you know, Ana Angel got saved. So, you know, I can't do nada or I'll put it about so the Holy Spirit can fill you. You have to pray. What? The Bible doesn't tell me that I have to pray and fast to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The church, the primitive church, prayed and fast for the Holy Spirit one time at Pentecost. They waited, and it came. It came. Yeah. It didn't go back. It came. Mm -hmm. That's why it was the diparate. It's another diparate and another nonsense when people say, you know, the end can still come because the Bible says in, in Joel that, that his spirit shall be derramada sobre toda carne y su hijo profetizarán, etc., etc. That already happened in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 was the fulfillment of John. Not the 21st century. That was the culmination of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that's still apparent. It's not going to happen again. It already happened. It's here. So when I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not goosebumps, jumping in tongues, speaking, screaming, running around the church. You ain't got to do all that, but you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. How do you know you're baptized with the Holy Spirit? Because the person who I was yesterday is not the person I am today. Because I have been regenerated and renewed day by day, which is the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, no. Go ahead. You want to say something? No, I was saying that, but... Oh, but... Oh, okay. that. No, I was saying... Okay. She's going to say something smart. Yeah. But that's exactly, that's why, we, it, that's why I re, I, sometimes I repeat a lot of the things and I repeat the essentials and some of the teachings I repeat because it took us years. We've been taught junk for years. That it's going to take quite a little bit of time to strip all that nonsense out of our minds. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while. <coughs> you know, Christian deliverance, and you know, Shannon, you need deliverance. You're a Christian, you don't need deliverance. You have been delivered. So you're a Christian, and you have the Holy Spirit living in you, and I'm telling you, you need to be delivered. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Because the Holy Spirit resides in a Christian. The Bible says, in order for you to bind the strong man, you have to take and bound the house, tie up the strong man, and kick him out. So, if the Christian, if the strong man of the Christian is the Holy Spirit, who is going to bind the Holy Spirit and throw him out? The, <laughs> So you're, gonna try, so you're gonna try to tell me that the devil or a demon can bite the Holy Spirit and kick him out. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know, we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna just go keep, keep on dethroning that kind of mentality that we have been taught for so many years. Man, the, the person I was in 2004 is not the person I am in 2011. You should see videos of me in 2004. Oh, hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should see videos of me preaching and singing and, and, and acting a mess in 2004, and it was okay because that's what I've been.